What's up? This big Capadon, Killer Bees on the Swarm. And right now you're watching Gully TV with my man Jamil. Stay focused and keep your eyes peeled. Why it? If you tune in to me, you're watching Gully TV. My travels this weekend it's brought me to the Queensboro. And I really, really appreciate this gentleman joining us for this interview tonight. Go ahead and introduce yourself, G. Criminal God! Okay. Criminal God, let's go. Let's get it, man. Southside Jamaica, what's up? Criminal God. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, why don't you um, articulate to my viewers the best your ability, what it was like growing up on the South Side? Oh, um, man, you know, growing up in South Jamaica, Queens, um, I mean, it was crazy out there. Word of mouth. I grew up in the, in the 80s era, you know, crack epidemic, epidemic um, 90s, you know. Um, it was. I grew up in the Supreme Team era, you know, the Coley War era, you know, the Fat Cat era. I grew up, I was a little nigga growing up seeing all that shit. And um, it was something that impacted my life. I seen a lot of family members, members affected by it. I seen a lot of, you know, friends, aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, just the whole hood. You just wake up one day and it was just crack bottles everywhere and drug needles on the floor everywhere. Shit was wild. You just had to adapt to that shit. And, um, but I grew up around knowledge of self. You know, I had a bunch, an abundant amount of five percenters around me. Um, my father was a five percenter. God bless the dead. Allah Kassim. Um, my uncles, you know, um, just the whole hood was mostly... Five percent is at that time. The whole New York City was turned out. Everybody was God at that time in New York. So right. um, it was a unique situation to be in and have knowledge of self and still be, you know, growing up around a lot of chaos, a lot of madness. Um, but it was still a lot of love. You know, I had my, my grandparents, my uncles, my aunts. It was a close-knit family. Um, my family's from Augusta, Georgia, North Carolina. They came up to, from New York, from the South, you know, when they was young. So they had to adapt to how New York City was, and um, I'm, a, I'm a Queens baby, I'm a New York City baby all the way. You know, um, my roots is in the South, um, so I carry that with me wherever I go. Um, but growing up in South Jamaica, Queens was very unique. It was just, you know, Baisley Park, Sufton Boulevard, Baisley Projects, 40 Projects, you know, American Towers, Rockaway Boulevard, God Brewer, you know what I'm saying? It, it was just, it was real, it was real out there. It was, it was, you had to be tough out there, you had to be, but you ain't have to be no tough guy out there. You know what I'm saying? That's the difference. You had to be tough, but you ain't had to be no tough guy. Um, we came up seeing a lot of love, foundational black Americans. Um, the neighborhood was, it was real. We seen a lot of unity in South Jamaica. And um, I carry that with me everywhere I go right now. Like, that energy that was out there around that time, seeing just the whole hood out there in Basie Park and Forty Park, you know, just out there in the park jams and shit like that. Like, that shit was like an experience you had to be there. And really like shoot, you know what I'm saying? Shootouts every weekend, shootouts, you know what I'm saying? It was serious. I seen a lot of friends die, you know what I'm saying? Like it was it was real out there just to be a little nigga, just to stand by them speakers out there in them park jams and just experience that, you know what I'm saying, that vibe. Shout out to Grandmaster Vic, you know, DeWitt, Tate Master B, JT, Rockaway Twins, you know what I'm saying? Um, anybody I left out, man, they all left a, a huge impact growing up in South Jamaica, man. So this being a, growing up around it, it was very like it was special to me growing up in South Jamaica. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it like that, definitely. Musically, coming out of Queens, who would you say influenced you the most? Ah uh, man, I would say um, I would say first Nas, cause he he came out first. But then after that, I would say Fifty Cent. Right. Um, Fifty like Fifty like five minutes away from my house. Like I could walk across the park. You know what I'm saying? And, and see what 50 Cent Block is at right there, like, you know what I'm saying? But but definitely him and Nas was definitely influential on um, Cool G Rap. Um, Lost Boys, definitely, could never forget the Lost Boys. Um, that's like, you could never forget the Lost Boys in South Jamaica. Like, shout out to Rest in Peace, Freaky Ty. Um, Glass Big Nice is home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Cheeks, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, salute to the Lost Boys. But those are my main influences, and all the... All the um all the blend DJs, like I said, Grandmaster Vic, um, DJ Dog Time, um, Tate Master B, you know, um, it was just a lot of a lot of dudes out of Queens that that just was like with that on that music tip, they influenced me, man. Them Paul Jam definitely influenced me a lot. Did you have the pleasure of seeing the Lost Boys? Uh, mainly Freaky Ty, who I hear a lot about. Did you see him in passing at all? I seen Freaky Ty a couple of times. Like I would say more than a couple of times. He was just somebody you just seen naturally going to the store in the hood like you pull up on the block they outside you know what i'm saying i would see freaky Todd walking down jamaica avenue with like 50 niggas with him you know what i'm saying literally like he's a tall brother you know what i'm saying he had like 50 dudes walking with him and it wasn't no like negative energy it was just like yo we 
we the lost boys. We out here. We moving. You know what I'm saying? And, and people had to respect it, and people did. You know what I'm saying? They was out here moving around, but it was a lot of love, a lot of energy. And they came from that park gym ever. So it was like growing up in the park, you kind of like, you family with the hood when you grow up in the, when you grow up in the park gyms. When you when you go to these events and these, you know what I'm saying, things going on in the neighborhood. When you do that on a regular basis, you become family. So they was already family from being in the park. When you go around South Jamaica and other parts of Queens, you're going from South Jamaica, you're going from Left Rack, you're going to Astoria, you're going to Queens Bridge. You know what I'm saying? So you become family with everybody that's pretty much outside in the streets living that type of life, that lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So mostly everybody in the Lost Boys on that whole clip, but definitely Nas, Salute to 50. And um the the greats, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that they're not great, but the ones that started it, Run DMC, you know, LL, you know, um, them dudes right there, like I used to see Run DMC ride down my block all the time, you know what I'm saying? With the with the furry hat on, you know what I'm saying, the raccoon joint on the back, like I would see them riding around, literally drinking 40s, you know what I'm saying? Like, they would pull up in Basie Park, they from Hollis. They would come to South Jamaica and be out there in Basie Park with, with dudes in the Supreme team. And, um, and, and you would see them out there with, with dudes like Bimmy and shit like that. Like, so it was real, you know what I'm saying? Like, hip-hop is, is like a staple to Queens. Like, I mean, they start, they be saying hip-hop started in the Bronx, but if, but if you ask Queens niggas, like, the way we move out there, like, it started out there with us, like... We definitely up that, you know what I'm saying? The whole blend tapes, everything, man. Like we we cultivated hip hop, you know what I'm saying, to a breed that the world can't can never like overlook at all. You know what right. I'm saying? How long you been doing hip hop? I've been doing hip hop all my life, God. Um, you know what I'm saying? Not to date myself, but I've been doing hip hop since like since I was like seven years old. You know what I'm saying? Um I remember the first albums I sat there and listened to was fucking Eric B and Rakim, Run DMC. You know what I'm saying? Um, Houdini, um, you know, just just all the greats. Curtis Blow, right? You know, I, I definitely was tapped into all of that, and I would just be up at night, even in the '90s, listening to Stretch and Barbito. Um, you know, just really tapped in. Um, Mr. Magic, when we literally used to sit down at night on Friday and Saturday with a tape. You know what I'm saying? Just recording the whole Friday and Saturday night radio. You know what I'm saying? Session and like literally just, you know, take it to school, make copies and shit like that. I was doing that type of shit. You know, so um definitely the um that, that Queens and that whole music and, and energy is instilled in me. Right. Before Criminal God, you had another identity that you went went by. Explain the trans transformation. The transformation? Wow, um shit. The transformation, I was I I started out rhyming under my born name, Allah Kassim. Um I, I kind of felt like people was overlooking the music because of the name. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you Muslim, you militant, you, you know what I'm saying? They didn't even associate it with it being a 5% and just saying the word Allah. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of saw how it was affecting how people kind of like, you know, gravitated towards the music. So I said, you know what? My nickname was Cosmo. I don't know how Cosmo came out of Cosmo with my father, but he, um, my nickname was Cosmo in my, my family in the streets in the hood. So I started using Cosmo. But then, you know, I would just see Cosmo pop up here and there when I, in my searches and stuff like that. So I just took it even a little deeper. Like my friends and family used to literally call me a criminal guard for shit I was getting into. It was always like a little underhanded side joke, you know what I'm saying? But it was something that was real. Like you ain't, you ain't guard, you a criminal guard. You out here. You know what I'm saying? You got a righteous name and you out here doing this. You should know better than to be getting involved in this type of street, you know what I'm saying, activities and shit like that. So um, I just say, you know what? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to run with I'm gonna run with criminal guard. And it's something that, you know what I'm saying, that that people that call me that sit there and they see me, they laugh now like, you funny for actually using that, that we called you that. You know what I'm saying? So I say, yo, like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, as of now, as, as for, you know what I'm saying, a, a couple of years now, it's just a straight up criminal guard, word. About your hat for a minute. I noticed that you put a spin on it. Explain. Criminal guard reform. Yeah, the whole, the whole criminal guard reform um, is a movement spearheaded by my brother Money Mel and I. Um, the criminal guard reform is, like I keep telling people, it ain't about prison reform, it ain't about school reform. It ain't about no type of reform like that. It's about reform for black people in these neighbor in these neighborhoods, these ghettos, these urban areas, the way we think, the way we treat each other, the way we interact with each other as brothers, the way we interact with each other 
as, as family members, the criminal law reformers, our thinking. We have to teach our babies to, to know how to combat um, this onslaught of mental, you know what I'm saying, like craziness that's being targeted towards them every day. And the whole criminal law reform is just strengthening about mind, body, and soul, and spirit, and, um, and having these kids being able to get out here and show strength and unity and, and do for self, do for ourselves, and not sit around and wait for nobody to do for us. We should have more business. We should be looked at as more of a militant movement. You know, we should have more militancy within our nation, within our our everyday life. Um, every everybody right now is just partying and bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And I and I'm and I'm with I'm with the party and the bullshit too sometimes. But it got to be a time when it got to be real. I counted you. One of the things that made me what stood out about you was the artwork that you was using right. for your projects. You was using a lot of the legendary South Side Jamaica, you know, gangsters and hustlers. Tell me what influenced you to do that there. Well, I mean, the whole influence was definitely um, five percenters first. A lot of those brothers are five percenters. You know, um, Black Just, you know, um, members of the Supreme team, like, all these brothers are five percenters, you know what I'm saying? Huge majority of them. And um, just the whole criminal guard movement, what better imagery to represent that? Um, I feel like right now, that era in the streets, that era in New York City, that era just across the whole country, no matter what city you was in, when you grew up in that era, the 80s, 90s, these were the type of men and women that you've seen, you know what I'm saying, out here coming up. And um, you might not always like the things that they did, but they, but they were men that had children, wives, mothers, you know what I'm saying, fathers. They did things for the community that touched a lot of people. And... Um, Sometimes it's just about balance, but I had to choose those brothers right there because they represented balance, they represented where I came from, um, they represent a time like people want to forget and the energy in the hood that um, we need to bring back. Um, I'm not saying bring back the negativity, but I'm saying bring back the code, bring back the ethics that, you know what I'm saying, that was um, kind of instilled in us at that time. You know, bring back the values. Um, like I said, nobody, nobody was perfect. All these brothers had issues, you know what I'm saying, they did things, and they were young. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them are here right now to tell their story and tell how, you know what I'm saying, they made a lot of wrong decisions. And you got to commend them for that. You know, um, it take courage, it take heart to get out here and say, yeah, I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to do better right now. And um, it take courage for me to sit back here and put those brothers out there. Because I've literally had people say some of the most negative things to me. You know what I'm saying? With, um about those brothers when I had them on my shirts and stuff, like hoodies when I was selling them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you, you, promoting, you promoting a killer? Oh, he shot a girl in the stomach? Um, he did this, he did that. I said, listen, bro, like, it's not about that one specific individual. It's about uh, energy. It's about a, a culture. It's about influence. It's, it's about truth and honor that we still got to uphold. Um, you can't let this whole... This um, TikTok era of how we living right now um, infiltrate who we really are as a people. And that's what people are doing. Um, we out here, people are out of touch. Um, we, we reality, they're out of touch with themselves. So these brothers, right, that, I, that you see me promoting, they, they kind of snap you back in reality. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You're going to hear somebody say, yeah, I remember them. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, let me tell you a story about them. Oh, that's my uncle. That's my aunt. That's my pops. You know what I'm saying? You're going to hear people come up. It's going to be a conversation piece. And we need more conversation pieces with content in hip-hop. Not about stupid, silly shit. You know what I'm saying? Not about gossipy shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit that's not going to uplift us. We need conversations about growth. You know what I'm saying? Knowledge and wisdom, understanding, and knowing we're going to go now. And so we don't make the same mistakes right now. So that's why I use those brothers, man. A salute to those brothers and everybody that's associated with them. And um, everybody that's still sending them letters and, you know, that's... that's um, Writing, you know, painting murals on walls, so on, not, not letting them be forgotten. You know what I'm saying? We can't let them be forgotten. And, I, and salute to the people that love me for doing what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Word. What it was like working with Coogee Rap? Oh, Coogee Rap was dope, man. Um, I ain't gonna find I just really sit back in the studio with G Rap and mostly just sit back and just li listen, listen to him rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Watch how he would write. Like, you would just see G Rap head just, he's sitting there writing in his head just, you know what I'm saying? And for you know, like, she got a masterpiece, you know what I'm saying? So working with G-Rap was an honor, you know what I'm saying? I got to be around G-Rap straight for like damn near two, two, three years, you know what I'm saying? Just in the studio every day, um, 
Salute to my man, Born Master. Um, he locked up right now, man. Salute to Born Master, hold your head. But Born Master plug, plugged me in with G-Rap years ago, man. We was in Southside one day. And um, I just ended up seeing G-Rap at his crib. And, um, you know, actually it was him and Pun, you know, which is crazy. I'm a young nigga, and I see him and Pun up the block. I'm like, oh, shit, you know what I'm saying? And um, I ain't really, you know, go down there on no group and shit like that. But I know, I know that's my man, Born Master. I know I'm going to see him, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, yo, what's up? I seen you with, yeah, that's my nigga, you know, because born from Corona. He from, the, you know, he from that side of Queens, you know what I'm saying? So, um, he kind of plugged me in with them, and, and G-Rap had a situation on the south side, and, um, we just ended up locking in every day, you know what I'm saying? And, um, went around with the brother, did a lot of shows, you know what I'm saying? Shit, some of them shits we had to get up out of there, police, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit was getting crazy, had a little couple of situations where they might have been, you know what I'm saying, on his ass about some shit. But he all good now. Word the mother, salute to G, man. He could travel, do his thing now, man. But um, yeah, we was running around heavy with G rap, man. You know what I'm saying? Really on some yo, like, this this the guard right here. Like, nobody better fuck around. Like, we really out here moving around with him. And you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody better disrespect him. He never had I've never known nobody for disrespecting G Rap, you know what I'm saying? But I just wanted to let him know, like, shit, he in my studio every day, definitely never going down here on this type of time. So it was dope working with G Rap, and I, I appreciate everything, you know what I'm saying, opportunities he brought across. I met the game with G Rap. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, one day G Rap asked me, like, yo, how you feel about the game? And I was like, he dope, he all right. Next thing you know, he's like, yo, come on, we going to the city. Jump in the web, we go to the W Hotel, go up in the room. Fucking game sitting in there. He ain't, he ain't say nothing like we going to meet the game or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Right. He didn't say, yo, what you think about him? Don't be cool, you know what I'm saying? And went right there and met him, you know what I'm saying? So it, it was dope fucking with you, right? I noticed that uh, like within like the last year, 18 months, you started to turn it up a little bit. I seen you leave from over here, go out to like the Bay Area, right? come back, and then I seen you working with like, seemed like you got a cosign. And ended up on a dope record with, was it produced by Lord Jamar? It wasn't produced by Lord, Architect of Law. Okay. Which one is that, the For God's Sake joint? The one with you, I think Five Mics. Oh, actually, um, I'm not even actually on that joint with Five Mics. I was just actually in the video. Oh, you was just in the video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just actually in the video. Um, Yeah, Lord Jamar, like, he's somebody who actually, actually tapped in with me, or maybe like, you know, about a year or two ago. And um, always... Just reached out, showing me love, you know what I'm saying? If I ever need advice on the game and shit like that. But um, him and Five Mike got a, got a, got a relationship, you yeah. know, it was prior to me or whatever. So but he was like, yo, uh, Five Mike was like, yo, call the criminal guard up, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they was in my hood a few times, you know what I'm saying? So they was like, yo, we got to hit you up. So they hit me up, and I just ended up going going down there, meeting Five Mike, you know what I'm saying? Good brother, you know what I'm saying? Um. Always nothing but love and respect for Lord Jamar. Every time he hit me up, like, yo, pull up, you know what I'm saying? But he definitely sent me a beat pack with some heat on there that I, I fuck got. with his production. Cooking up, yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. He fuck with my, my team out of Virginia Beach, the opioid era. And um, I'm, I'm impressed by his production, being that so he's traditionally an right. MC. Right, definitely. So what, uh, what can we expect from you uh, this summer? This summer, listen, I got this, I got the EP right now. Um, peace to the God, Architect of Law. Now, Architect of Law is, is missing, mixing and mashing this joint down as we speak. Um, you know, so I'm just waiting to gear up. I got about 10 joints on there. I might, I might, listen, I might have to call it more than EP. I might just throw like, like three more joints on there. And, um, but I got some fire. I'm going to call it, um, CYC, Crazy Young Criminals. Um, I got some, I got some, I got some dope visual ideas. And I'm just ready to get out here and just start smashing and getting these videos out. So look for more Criminal Guard visuals all summer from, these, from this new project I got dropping right now. Um, I gotta start throwing a Criminal Guard annual Today's Math Barbecue. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking to get that off the ground within this month. You know what I'm saying? The first annual you know, uh, barbecue for the Criminal Guard Today's Math um, uh, situation I got going on. So. I'm just looking forward to just smashing right now, just staying busy working with different artists. Um, Izzy Nice, um, another brother out there in um, the Bay Area. Um, architect of Law. I got my man Yusef, hands on music. Um, I got a lot of dope people I'm working with, man, but I just want to say that this is the criminal guy ever right here, man. Nothing y'all niggas can say, nothing y'all can do gonna stop this shit. Um, you know, it is what it is, man. If, this, if you real, 
you really real, get behind this shit, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't no time for hate. This is about love. If you if you really can't see by my social medias, well, you know what I'm saying? My um, It's all about love. You know what I'm saying? You might see me on, you might see yourself on my Instagram. You might see your moms, your pops, your grandmother screaming criminal guard with a criminal guard hat on. You know what I'm saying? I show love like that. You know what I'm saying? This ain't about, like I say, being tough. This ain't about nothing negative. It's about bringing the energy and the vibe back to these streets about not being scared. You know what I'm saying? Niggas got to stop being scared to talk to each other. Niggas one, two blocks away don't fuck with each other. We got to get off of that corny shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm speaking specifically to my hood, South Jamaica, Queens. Like, you know what I'm saying? You see me everywhere. I ain't from the project. I am not from 40 projects. I'm from Sufton Boulevard. You know what I'm saying? But it's all South Jamaica, Queens. But I go to I don't give a fuck about getting out here and making moves. You know what I'm saying? I'm not afraid to go nowhere. My energy is, is, is great. My energy is, is beautiful. It's all about love and positivity. And I'm God and I'm the black man. And you got to respect that. So if it means me coming in your hood, you know what I'm saying, to show you what's, what, what's real and what love, showing what love is really about out here in these streets and how we should move, it's so big. You're going to see me. I'm going to pull up on you. No matter what's going on, I'm going to be there. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. I just want everybody to get behind this criminal guard movement if you're really real, and you know what I'm saying, and you really, like you say, you, you, you say you for the babies, at the end of the day, this is really what it's all about, it's all about the babies, the babies come first, we gotta leave something behind for them, that's real, you know what I'm saying, um, we got a lot of different, a lot of different situations going on in the world, going on here in New York City, and these babies are out here just being left, so we gotta have something they, they can stand by, we gotta have strong men and women out here that stand for something that's about something real, that these kids can hold on to and, and carry for the rest of their life. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm the way I am because I had strong men and women in my life. You know what I'm saying? I could never forget the energy I came from. You know what I'm saying? I could never sit back and just go, you know what I'm saying, be a docile type of, you know what I'm saying, simp ass type of dude at how, as far as I think, you know what I'm saying, as far as I live. I'm very opinionated, I'm very vocal, you know what I'm saying, but I'm very fair and I'm very honest, you know what I'm saying? But overall, I'm real with myself, you know what I'm saying, before I try to be real with anybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's what Criminal Guard is all about, world. I see you wrote music for Power 105 DJ Cherry Martinez. How you ended up in that situation? Oh, wow, man. Yeah, that was that was shit. I actually had just came on when I when I got that situation. Um, my, um, my partner I used to rhyme with, um, we, I, I was doing the group thing at one point, and he was moving around with some people, and um, but he had a relationship with them. And uh, Cherry Martinez used to come out of the studio every now and then, and she actually had us offered us like, yo, you know, y'all guys want to write, you know what I'm saying, something for, for the show or something for me? And I was like, yeah, that's dope. And I pinned something dope for her. You know, I don't know whatever happened to it, you know what I'm saying? Um, she liked it. We hit it off with it. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But it was one of those, you know, I, I, I chalk it up to, you know, just growing and learning the game. But I, I still think it was a dope, you know what I'm saying, part of the journey where to be to say I, I wrote for somebody that was um, on the radio, you know what I'm saying, in New York City. No doubt. Tell me uh, about some of these mixtapes that you put out independently. The Goods, Sufton Boulevard, you know what I'm saying? A lot of those mixtapes, um, those are like my early... The Gods, pardon me. The Gods, yeah. yeah. Um, those are like, a lot of, those, a lot of my mixtape material was like early... Like I, when, I, when I first came home I, from my little scare bit I did, um, maybe like 2006. And um, me, you know, me and my partner at the time, we was rhyming, and uh, it was like, you know, you get that bug, yeah, we're going to get serious right now. And uh, we just was like really just rapping over a bunch of, you know, industry beats and shit like yeah. that. But um, it was just an accumulation of all the freestyles we, we kind of had there, and we just kind of put them out. Um, just on the street, you know what I'm saying? We would sell them five, ten dollar CDs, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. And um, we would make, you know, we would make a couple, couple hundred dollars here and there just to keep the... Just to keep the momentum going, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's really what that was about. But it was never nothing that we actually like pressed up and we was I mean we, we had opportunities where we was I never forget we uh had an opportunity to go up there and meet with DMX and it was we was in Manhattan somewhere. It was like a line of like a hundred niggas outside and I was like, yo, my nigga, I'm not I ain't with this shit. Nigga wanted for us to rap in the hallway, some random nigga. And um, you know, we're just going through the game, you know, we young niggas, you know what I'm saying? But um it was just something that we those mixtapes was the, that that energy that we used at that time to kind of get ourselves known out here in right. the streets. Do you got the merch available online? Anyway? Oh man, the merch is available on my gram right now. You can um, Instagram. I got all the links in my bio. Teespring. I got Criminal Guard hoodies, Criminal Guard reform hats. Um, I got Criminal Guard T-shirts. Um, you can get some of your dopest. 
Street, you know what I'm saying? Legends on some of my shirts. Um, support the movement. Get out here, man. CriminalGuardTeespring.com. You know what I'm saying? Go to my Instagram, CriminalGuardMC. You know, Criminal Guard number seven. You know what I'm saying? So get out here, man. Buy some dope merch, man. I got this dope half of Gully TV. I hope to see him in it one day, man. Right, criminal, you know, criminal. I brought you here in addition to doing this interview to formally invite you into this Pillmatic compilation movement that I'm doing. Right, right yeah, you check it out. You, know, you already know about that. Right. If you're ready to get busy, you're more than qualified. I've been dealing with you for over a year now. I respect your work ethic and your music as well. Thank you, brother. You ready Appreciate to come you. on in, introduce you to P.A. Dre, put some music out, and get it started. I'm with that, bro. Word. It's an honor, man. Word. I respect what you do, man. I salute what you do always, brother. Word, man. You know what I'm saying? You're a prominent figure in, in this culture, in this community, man. Um, you know, people got to respect it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't have to come to Queens. You out here. You know what I'm saying? Like. We probably passed each other a million times, you know what I'm saying? Just moving around out here. So you came out here and I salute you, man. And salute to my wiggies, you know what I'm saying? I see you fuck with, you know what I'm saying? Beneficial, Beneficial. Lord, we yeah. out here, man. Far Rock, my Queens bitch brothers, man, you know what I'm saying? King KOB, we out here, man. Work. This, this, is the, this is the alliance, this whole movement that we're doing. We playing team ball, so if you already know, know them niggas, they coming with us too. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? We all gonna work together and shit and build some momentum and get y'all heard. That's my prime objective. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for taking your time to come out here and share, you know, some details about your journey. Go ahead and leave them um, your information where they can find you at if they wanna look link up and do some music, get some features or something like that. Right. We're gonna get up out of here. Listen, man, I wanna first of all thank Gully TV. For, you know what I'm saying? Show me love. I appreciate you sincerely, my brother. But um, let's get it, man. Criminal Guard MC, man. If you want features, if you want, you know what I'm saying, merch, just hit me up on my Instagram. Criminal Guard number seven. You know what I'm saying? Um, Criminal Guard MC at gmail.com. You want to send some beats, you want to you wanna do a feature, um, let's talk business. You know what I'm saying? Like, with all that, let's work shit. Let's talk business for real, man. You know what I'm saying? So all my all my socials, Criminal Guard, let's let's talk business, man. Let's get it, man. We out here. Okay. Gully TV. One more question. I have to ask this. Your top five Queens MCs of all time. Top five Queens MC of, of all time. All time. Um, Nas, 50, G Rap, LL. Criminal God! That's what's up. <laughs> all right. Peace. Peace.